Hey everyone, and thank you so much for joining me today on my YouTube channel. I'm your girl, Robin Nicole, the inspiration specialist, and I'm wired to inspire you to live your authentic purpose. Y'all, I love, love, love what I have to talk to y'all about today. Um, this is going to be a multi-layered, multi-part breakdown. I prayed I was going to do a big, long video. The Holy Spirit told me to break it down into bite-sized chunks, so I'm going to be obedient and do that. So I'm going to cut right to it. I, as you can see by the title, it says it's raining bread. And this is part one. Now, this was an actual dream. One of my childhood friends, one of my closest friends had, and I was in the dream. The dream was extremely long. It was very thorough and there's a lot to unpack. So that is partially why I am going to break this down as well. So that it's something that you can really take in. And I do know that God will be speaking to many of you concerning this. So I would like to start off with the scripture reference for this dream. And this is how it reads. We are going from Exodus. We're in Exodus 16. Okay. And it says, the Israelites said to them, if only we had died by the Lord's hand in Egypt. There we sat around pots of meat. And ate all the food we wanted. But you have brought us out into this desert to starve this entire assembly to death. Then the Lord said to Moses, I will rain down bread from heaven for you. Now, I'm just going to give you that first part. So essentially, the dream starts off. My friend decides to go to Piedmont Park and have a picnic. A small gathering of some people that she knew very, very tiny. And she had everything she needed to take care of it. Well, lo and behold, she walks into the park, she turns around and all of a sudden, well, first of all, she turns around and she sees like a small setup, the setup, you know, she sees her small setup rather. And then she turns around and she panics because she sees tons and tons and tons of people. She is like, oh my God, I have no idea. I have no idea how I'm going to serve them. Now, this is how she read it. She said, she wrote it for me. She said, I panicked. And I said, oh, my God, how am I going to be able to serve all these people? And why are they all here for my picnic? How did they find out about it? Because she had plans of who she wanted to come to the picnic. But then she goes on to say, as I looked around, they happened to be all people that I knew. They were family, friends, and some that I hadn't seen in years. Okay. I'm going to stop right there. There's more to that, but I'm going to stop right there. So the three points prophetically God wants me to share with someone right now listening is the first part of this breakdown is this. Number one, if you are feeling panicked in your situation, you are feeling panicked like, oh my God, I had a plan for this thing to go this particular way. I had enough food for this amount of people, but now this is happening. God help me. Like what's going on? That first word is shock. It's three S's. I'm going to break this down with the first word is shock. If you are feeling panic and shock, you had your own idea of how you wanted things to go, but God had a bigger plan for you. So that's for somebody right now, somebody who is feeling shock or you are like, oh my God, I know I put work into this. Cause again, y'all, she planned the picnic. She had everything together just the way she set it up. And then when she got there, it was way more than she can imagine. So that's also that Ephesians 3.20. So what happened was she prepared, she planned. And when she got there, God had other people there. Okay, now watch this. For some of you, God has a bigger idea. The shock and awe that you have, you are worried and concerned because you're like, God, I'm ill prepared for this. I, I, I prayed for this. I prepared for this to a certain extent, but not for the way it's presented to me now. And now I don't want to ruin it all together because it's not what I had in mind. Okay. So this is where we're going to make a pivot. Okay. The next thing is serving. She said, how can I serve all these people? That's your next S. The first was shocked. The second one is serve. Okay. She was worried about service. She's like, 
How can I serve these people and I'm not equipped? I don't have enough food. I only plan for enough people, right? For such and such amount of people. And God is saying, as long as your mind is on service, as long as your mind is on taking care of things and getting things together the way you're supposed to, he is going to take care of the we the rest. So somebody right now feels like you will not be able to complete a thing that God wants you to do. The first thing was about not having enough. This one is about not being able to complete the task, not being able to serve fully in the capacity in which you feel led to do. Well, I am here to tell you prophetically, if you are feeling that way, this is God letting you know you will be able to serve. And the thing, there's a bigger thing that I'm getting to, and I hope you guys could catch it. I'm going to say it at the end, but pay attention to the fact that if you already have the heart and the mind of service and you just may not be able to hit the marks that you have, then that possibly means that you have to bring those things back to God and let him reset you so that you can view it with his eyes. Now, lastly, the third S is support. Some of you are endeavoring major projects right now and you feel like you do not have support. Be very careful to cut off family, friends, and people that you think are worthless and not helpful to you because they're bucking your system. They're not doing what you want them to do you way, the way you want them to do it. This is exactly what happened in the dream. It was, no, listen, I have these amount of people. I want these friends. I want these family. But what she didn't realize was it was so many people and it was people, it was the same group. It was the same type of people, meaning people that she loved, but most importantly, God expanded the people to people who loved her. It was loved ones. It was friends. It was family. She had a couple people in mind, but God was like, no, I'm going to bring everybody out. In fact, I'm going to bring people out that you have not seen in years because I am sending you what I know you need. You may not think you need it, but I know that you do. Right? So it goes to say this. For those of you feeling shock, you are stuck feeling that you can't serve and you are wondering how you are going to be able to support the extra people that came and the abundance of people that came. God wants you to know this clearly. You have everything you need. Okay. And what is the undercurrent in this? God is in control. He is absolutely in control. And what I want you guys to understand is this. When God is in, in control, your best out is to chill. Chill out. Stop tripping. Let God do what he is doing. It's obvious the way this thing started. She started off with a plan, which is excellent. But what's even doper than that is that she was prepared for the plan that she had. So some of you... You're, you're feeling the panic. You're feeling the, the, the shock and all. You're feeling like you're not going to be able to serve the people. You are feeling like the support factor is questionable because you prepared according to what your mind is at. Well, this is where Ephesians 3.20 comes in. It's going to be above you. It's above your thoughts and what you're thinking and your actions and such. So you have to get your mind right. So rejoice because it's raining bread. And this is only part one. I didn't even tell you all the part yet about when I come into the picture. And that is going to be another thing that God is going to be showing you guys about what he was trying to use me to represent in the dream. And I believe that it's going to bless you too. So remember, number one, if you are shocked and shocked, number two, if you are questioning your ability to serve, and number three, if you have questions about support, God is letting you know that it is ultimately going to be worked out. Please do not get stuck in a space of worry when God is sending a, a clarion call. He's sounding the bell today. Stop tripping. He is going to make sure you have everything you need. It might seem like you don't, but if you are operating from a God-given vision, he will do it. The only way you can forfeit this is if God gave you that vision and you started putting your stank on it, you started manipulating things, you took God out of the equation, that might be another conversation. And I'll circle back to that too. But if you know you've been doing right, God is going to do it. And guess what else? If you think you might have maybe, hey, maybe I got too far away from God from this. Maybe I, maybe I need to go back to God and re-strategize. Let me see if I could, I need to bring God back closer into the equation. If you're feeling like that too, just go ahead after you hear this and say a prayer, Lord, reset me. If I've gotten too far away from what you've been trying to tell me, I'm sorry. Please, I know you gave me this. 
Please let me get back to square one with you and maybe things will get back in order again because some of you are feeling that because you just need a realignment with the Lord. And once you get that, the money going to flow, the structure is going to flow, the new ideas and the divine pivot will come into place. And that's going to be part two of Rain and Bread, the divine pivot. So that is going to be the next part. I hope you guys enjoyed this word. I'm so excited. I'm so, so thrilled about this. Stay tuned for the next one. I'm Wired to Inspire. I hope you are too.